some of you may have been in getting into error because of uh, the second clock you wanted to add to your processor so I'm going to show you how to do that without getting into error or something like that okay so let's start from the beginning we are going to add the zinc processor first after adding the zinc processor double click on it okay let's uh, run block automation first okay now double click on it um, enable the second clock now go to clock configuration and PL fabric clock then enable the second clock this should be 50 and it's in megahertz range so don't have to do anything else and also you can see that it has a clock output and also it has a reset output with respect to that clock so we need to enable another reset output for our second clock so what you do go to PSPL uh, configuration go to general and here go to enable clock resets select this second option reset 1n underscore n click ok then you will see that there will be another clock and another reset with respect to it now we are going to add the gpios as usual just click uh, add ip then type gpio So the first GPIO should connect to the input module, um, run connection automation, select as XI. Then by default, it will connect to 100 megahertz clock domain. You don't have to select anything else. Now again, select buttons, click OK to connect to the buttons. Now we want, let's say we want to enable dual channel and connect to the switches too with this same GPIO. Just go to IP configuration. Enable dual channel. This is going to be a 4-bit input. So you can do that and click OK. And it will ask you to run the connection automation again because, because of this open port here. Uh, just select switches. Click OK. To connect to switches with the second channel. Now we need to have the LEDs as output. So we need another GPIO. Click on GPIO. Um, search for GPIO. Then double click on it this one will also connect to 100 megahertz clock domain automatically if you uh, run the connection automation and again here leds okay so they are properly connected to the leds buttons and switches now we need to connect the p mod but do not connect the p mod from here because it doesn't select that um, port je automatically so go to boards on the left side and select the connect to je double click on it it will give you a list of p mods available for that port just select the appropriate p mod for us we are going to use ad analog to digital converter for lab 3 so double click on that p mod module now it will come with the port name too when it asks you to run the connection automation again, uh, in this case, you should select the second clock domain because we are going to use 50 megahertz clock for this P mod. So here on this tree, just instead of auto, select 50 megahertz. All done. You changed the domain because it didn't have um, it didn't have a 50 megahertz system reset module created yet so it will create one more um, with this one this is for 100 megahertz and the other one should be for 50 megahertz and it will connect the run the connection automation this module will connect to this processor via that 50 megahertz processor system reset module so let's see that click ok Alright, so now you have two system reset modules. See, this is for 100 megahertz and this is for 50 megahertz. Now you save the block design and if you run the validation, you should be able to get through the error thing. You are not supposed to have any more errors, but you can ignore the warnings you might have. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, looks good. Validation successful. There are no errors or critical warnings in this design. 
now you can generate the um, remember to create the HDL wrapper always from here create HDL wrapper let Vivado manage the wrapper and auto update click OK and after that you are supposed to generate the bit stream so it will take several minutes I'm not going to do with that but still I'm showing you the whole process so after generating bit stream you go to file and go to export export hardware when you click on export hardware it will give you an option uh, we don't uh, it didn't generate the bit stream so it cannot really do that right now but when you click on export hardware it will give you an option to include the bit stream remember to check that box and after that you launch the SDK and you'll be able to write the software for this hardware interface thank you guys